Okay, so that first question was about mo um, games. Um, you also said something thingy along the lines of much more. You said much more. Yeah. Um, the, the grammar for the, of that expression wasn't quite right, right? Um, uh, can you remember what you said exactly again? Um, they play uh, computer games. Yeah. And then how did you use much more? Uh, uh, I, I say like much more prefer or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we would say is our um, computer games are much more popular. Yes. That's the word. Yeah, we wouldn't I'm say preferred. Sure. You'd say preferred instead of that, right? But if you want to say much more, you would say computer games or mobile games are much more pop popular now than amongst the young in, in comparison to traditional board games like chess and blackgammon and What's that game you play? Uh, abacus? No, an abacus isn't really a game, is it? It's a it's a counting machine. It looks like a game. <laughs> Chinese calculator. They sort of use an abacus uh, back and forth. Okay. All right. Does that help? Yes. Yeah. Um, it'll get easier, um, and it's easy for me to spot things if you say something that's not quite right. Um, So the next question is, is do you play any games? Um, actually, nowadays, I don't have much time to play games. But sometimes I play chess and also playing cards on mobile. What, 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 what was that on mobile? Uh, a kind of mobile games. Yeah. Playing cards. Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm getting that, I'm, I'm missing that last word. It sounded like cut, but I didn't know what it was. Uh, I mean, playing cats. Cats? Yes, C-A-R-D-S, cats. Cards. Ah, cats. Cards. You got to get the R in there. R. R. R's. R. And I'm, from Ireland, I, I'm from Ireland and our R's are really strong. R, R, R. Yeah, cards. Cards. Yeah. Um, what? When you said it, it sounded like cuts, cuts. I, I, you know, and that what that did not translate right. That did not go in my ears. I didn't even know what word you were trying to say there. So it's cards. 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 Yeah. Cards. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Missy. Yeah. Cards. Cards. Yeah, we play cards. Um, so there was a popular game when I was young. That was a long time ago, and it was called Trump Cards. Trump cards. Trump. Trump cards. Yeah, Trump cards. So, um, or I think the, I think it was called top trumps, and the idea was, um, you know, it could be like animals, it could be the theme, and so you would put down these cards, and if I had a lion, and you had a pussycat, well, the lion would trump the pussycat because it's bigger and stronger yeah? yeah or it could be it could it could be the cars so you could put down a ford and then i could say well i've got a ferrari and it's faster than the ford so so therefore my car trumps you and then if i put my card down on your card then i get to lift all the cards that are there you see i, I win all the cards so so that's called top trumps, yeah, cards. Uh, and I used to play Monopoly. Monopoly? Yes. Never heard of that. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a kind of... Mono Mono Monopoly. Yeah, yeah, Monopoly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> monopoly that didn't translate yeah monopoly that's very good fun right very good yeah so monopoly is, is monopoly. the correct yeah yeah, yeah. it's the correct pronunciation yeah 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 so that's interesting uh because i think i think that game started in america and uh, like we have a version in britain 
and I think in different countries, the various street names of it. So, um, and we actually use it an expression out of the game Monopoly, um, where, you know, go straight to jail. D do not pass go, go straight to jail. Do you know that? Do you remember that bit? Mm, we have to go to the jail? Yeah, yeah the jail. Yeah. You, you, know, you know the way if you do, there's something in it, you can get a card in it and it tells you you have to go straight to jail. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we use that sometimes as an expression, um, go straight to jail. Let me, let me just, uh, let me, yeah, let me use that as an expression. Um, go straight to jail. Monopoly wiki. There's a go to jail card. Go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Right? Uh, we, we say we say pounds. Um, so so basically, um, 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 go to jail. Let me let me let me search an idiom. Um, it's not really coming up, but but we we'll, we'll say that um, you know if if something catastrophic happens, right? Catastrophic happens, um, you know, or you have to go straight to jail. Uh, you have to go straight to jail. Um, you know, uh, do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. It's just a way of saying, right? You know, you're you're finished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's a bit of fun okay right uh raheli has joined us since we started that little lesson hi raheli hi Mr. Lockhart. hi everyone hi um, so we're doing um the uh, this paper comes from elham actually she's not joined us today because she's practicing for her, her exam tomorrow but I give her some one-on-one -on -one time this morning before class started. Um, so this is firm. So do you want to have a go at this next question? Uh, describe an open-air street market which you enjoyed visiting. Do you want to have a go at that? Uh, oh, we've lost Rahel. Yeah, no, you're there. Um, do you want to have a go at that, Raheli? Uh, I wrote a short text about it, uh, about the, this subject. Um, I can read it now. Yeah, do you do that? Sure. Mm. Mm. Uh, we have a fascinating uh, image in outdoor market uh, in Iran. Uh, it returns to the latest month of the Iranian calendar, which uh, count as a waiting time for a spring and also a, mm, as a waiting time for um, mm, waiting time for uh, one of the greatest uh, ceremony uh, in Iran for the New Year festival. Um, in the last month uh, of winter, you can go there, uh, go to the streets and see amazing pictures of people's uh, hustle and bustle. People buy and sell everything that they need to celebrate the new year. And I always prefer watching um, house plants segments in the open air markets. That's it. Excellent. I'm very impressed, Raheli. That was excellent. Thank um, you. I, I like the way you said hustle and bustle. Right, that was good. Hustle and bustle. You yeah. like the hustle and bustle that, that you know all the people sort of jostling. That's another yeah. good word, jostling. You know, jostling, jostling with one another to get through. Um, and then you like the house plant section. So you've obviously got green fingers, as we say, and, and like plants. Yes. Uh, so that's that's good. Um, 
in comparison, Elham tells me that she all her plants die. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> she, she says i'm good at killing plants she likes flowers and she likes plants but she says uh, they always die on me so there you go so we can she she will laugh at that because she will listen to this recording so she'll laugh at that so um um so when you talk about somebody who's not here um we we, we say that's using their name in vain using their name in vain in vain yeah let me let me let me let me share the screen and show you with that how you write that right so uh google chrome there we go yeah using your name in vain oh didn't spell it correct speaking casually or idly of someone as in there he goes taking my name in vain again Yes. Yes. Very, yeah. Them. So, so somebody's talking about you. They're using your name in vain, and that's actually that comes from the Bible because in the Bible we're forbidden from using God's name in vain, right? You know, you don't invoke God's name in vain, and so people have taken that and then they use it in an everyday context. So, if I was to speak about Raheli when you're not around, or if I was speaking about you and not to you but about you but in your earshot you could say are you using my name in vain you see in vain. yeah yes. in vain uh and vain vain comes from vanity yeah so it's not you know um uh, um who's making the meal tonight oh it's raheli and you, you don't know what i'm talking about but you just heard your name raheli and you say are you using my name in vain you see so that's that's quite a common that's quite a common expression another expression about that that we use a lot in britain is um speak of the devil so if if we are all in a room instead of being on a zoom class if we're all in a room um and you're not there raheli's not there but i speak about raheli I think uh, it is gossip, G gossiping. Gossiping, right, right, exactly, right. So if I'm gossiping about you, but I don't have to be gossiping because gossiping is saying things behind your back I wouldn't say to your face. Yes. Right, which is different. The opposite to flattery is flattery is where I say something to your face I wouldn't say behind your back. Yes. See, see, see that? See how that's yeah. opposite? Yeah. So, but I, I'm, I'm not necessarily gossiping about you. But if I just mention you, right? right. Um, and then suddenly you come into the room. Suddenly, it's just I'm talking about you or saying something about you, and suddenly you come into the room. I got it. We say, speak of the devil. Speak of the devil. Speak of the devil. Yeah. Right. Now, we right. don't speak of the devil, right? Like this, right? It said when a person appears just after being mentioned. See that? Yes, I see. Now, in saying that, it's quite innocuous. The word innocuous means harmless. I'm not calling you a devil or the devil, right? I'm not really doing that. Yes. It, 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 it's just an expression speak of the devil as if as if i was te it's as if i'm telling saying terrible things about you <laughs> but i'm not i'm not really we just say speak of the devil okay it's it's pure expression that was great thank you okay right so let me stop shall no um yeah, so then the next one is maybe gets I'll pick in somebody else then. Let me see if Angel. Angel, do you want to have a go? I don't want to put you on the spot. If you don't want to do it, do you want to have a go at speaking or would you rather not? No, I don't understand. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, hey. 
um, why don't you tell us about a market in Spain, Madrid or wherever, describe in just a couple of, in one sentence or two, what the yeah. markets, you know, the street markets are like, Mercado. In Spain, uh, there is a street market uh, called uh, Rastrillo. <laughs> Uh, mm, there is uh, there are many fruits in in this. Uh, the fruit is mm, more cheap. Mm, so the people mm, go go to the rastrillo <laughs> for yeah. for buy fruit. And, and other products and typical, uh, um, but uh, the princip uh, principalmente uh, um, just the uh, fruits and, como se dice, how do you say, uh, frutos secos. <laughs> <laughs> second hand second hand yeah second hand yeah yeah right that's very good angel very good uh, no no me muy bien muy bien ex, ex, excelente excelente right i i will tell you one one wee small tip is you said more cheap things are more cheap yeah that's what you said more cheap more cheap yeah you, you said that but that's not correct we would never say anything is more cheap right we would say i know why you say that because um I, i've learned enough about spanish to know you use the word more a lot as, as all latin languages do but we would say cheaper cheaper mm -hmm. cheaper. cheaper yeah more. things are you, yeah 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 um we would say cheaper, um, or the bigger word is inexpensive. The fruit is cheaper. No. <laughs> when you, well, well, I'm not sure what that word is when you're saying the fridge. What's that? What do you mean by that? And mm. I'm not sure what word you're saying there. The, the goods. The goods, we would say the goods, the things that you buy. Good the thing. Uh, other things in in the market. The things, things. Things. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, that's fine. Clothes. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Clothes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. So so you, you, you so you, you could say um you're saying the clothes, right? Like this. Clothes. Mm -hmm. And the clo the clothes are cheaper. Um you could also say the things, right? So it's nothing specific. Just stuff. Yeah. Um or you could say the goods the goods right so goods is merchandise for possessions yeah the goods 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 mm -hmm. goods yeah um now we've lost um alice from china she has an unstable connection so she might come back Okay, Sorry. so that so that was good. That was a good. That was a good. Uh, that was a good attempt, Anchel. Uh, me bien, me bien. Um, no. no, you should hear my Spanish. It's terrible. Do you know uh, black or leaves? Blacks of or green or leaves. Leaves. Or leaves. Uh, one moment. Uh, I'm I'm hearing that word there, leaves. I'm hearing that I'm word. Going, I'm going to 
to send um, how how say yeah you're going to send it to me on the chat put it on the chat what you're saying olives olive this is olives 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 <laughs> yeah olives these guys yeah yes. <laughs> yeah olives yes. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Olives is the pronunciation we use. Olives, olives. olives. Yeah, olives. yeah. I I love olives. Uh, I have to say, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So um, yeah, you get you get things like olives in in the, in the market. Yeah, olives, olives. Yeah, very good, very good. Excelente, <laughs> excelente. Exactly. <laughs> right. Um, so what I'll do is I'll come back full circle to thingy now. Back to your turn. Um, if you want to unmute thingy. Yes, that. Okay, and then I'll say, I'll just read out the question that I sent out. Um, shopping at markets. Do people in your country enjoy going to open air markets that sell things like food or clothes or old objects which type of market is more popular and why so mm. so, so you're so you're from burma none of us have been to burma right yeah I'm, I'm guessing <laughs> that i would quite like to go to burma and um, yeah. um but um so none of us have experience of it so why don't you educate us educate us or regale us regale there's a good word i'll teach you i've done it before in class regale regale your regale is to entertain or amuse someone with talk he regaled her with colorful account of this afternoon's meeting right so so what i'm saying is and uh, thingy please regale us with an account of going to market in Burma. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I think uh, people love going to the open air markets in our yeah. country because you can buy some seasonal fruits and a vegetable, very, very fresh vegetables in the open market, open air markets. And also you can buy some uh, clothes. Yeah, maybe they are secondhand clothes. It's cheaper than any other brands or some other expensive products selling in the supermarket. My grandma usually goes to the open air markets to buy these things, but uh, nowadays we are so many. Self service supermarkets, so they are out a little bit out of fashion now. Yes, but if you go to a supermarket, you can't negotiate the price, right? Yeah, we can bargain any. Yeah. If you go to a market, if you go to if you go to a street market, you can bargain. Yes, of course. And, and they uh, will give you like an extra product or something like that. Just like yeah. A yeah. I, I remember uh, I was in a market in Spain once. It was in, I was on holiday in Mallorca. Angel will know what I'm talking about. The rest of you will not know that, but it's uh, an island. It's one of the, it's called the Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean and it belongs to Spain. It's called Mallorca. And mm -hmm. when I was younger, I used to go there regularly on holiday. And so I was in a open street market and I thought I would buy a wallet. And the woman wanted, you know, I can't remember the price, but let's say she was advertising it, you know, 40 euros, 40 euros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I think, hey, no. <laughs> and I said, 
I said four, four euros, right? Or five euros, right? A really small price, right? And she said, she threw her arms in the air like this. I went and held her head like this. I went, Mama Mia Coca Cola. <laughs> Which I understood perfectly. I didn't speak any Espanol at that stage. And she didn't speak any English, but we both understood each other that she thought <laughs> that was ridiculous that I would be going so cheap. So I uh, bartered with her. Barter is another good word, a bit like bargain. Yeah, you know, barter. <clears throat> exchange, uh, exchange, yeah. Or sorry, yeah. He often bartered a meal for drawings, right? Yeah. Or the other word that we use, that, uh, which is a bit more, is the bargain. An agreement between two more people, what will do for each other. A thing bought or offered for sale much more cheaply than usual or expected. So that's the word. That's how thingy used that word. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's good. Um, in so Marcos, in Morocco. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, the other word that is the uh, Americans use is dicker, right? So this is, yeah, so this is North American, right? Engage in petty argument or bargaining. Sam advised him not to dicker over the extra fee. See, dicker. dicker. Yeah, dicker. No, but we don't say that in Britain, but the Americans say that. Yeah. Yeah, so I usually point out in class when I'm, a, I'm conscious of a, 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 it's a different in a different country. So we would say bargain, um, but the Americans would always say dicker, right? Um, and if there was a, a, a car crash, right, we would say car crash like this. There was a car crash down the street this morning. Um, or we would say a car accident like that. You know, a car accident, mm -hmm. two cars crashed. But the Americans would say this, right? They would say, a fender bender. Fender bender. <laughs> right? A minor collision between motor vehicles. See that? Informal North American. That's what they say, a fender bender. Because the fender is like the bumper, what we would call the bumper, you know, that's attached to the car. Um. I'll show you a picture of what a fender is, right? A fender images. Yes, yeah, so this is the fender, see? The fender. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of an accident with two cars like that, they call that a fender bender. So, so there you go. But we would we would just say a, an accident. We would use the proper the proper word, right? I think they like it because fender and bender rhyme, right? So so therefore. Somebody once said that in America and it just spread like wildfire and they all say, oh, I was in a fender bender this morning. Okay, right. So um, that was a very good attempt at that. Are you enjoying this speaking thing? I, I, you, you, we haven't really done this in class much before, um, having to come up with sentences because I can hear when you make a mistake and then correct it, you know, almost immediately. Um, um, So we'll maybe do one more and then we'll go back to, we'll do some vocabulary. Um, right, so who is next? Raheli, this is for you. Question is, yes. you want to come, you come off mute, thank you. Um, what do you think are the advantages of buying things from shops rather than markets? Could you explain about the difference between shop and market? Sure. So a shop is where you ha would have a shopping mall. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and established shops that are open all year round and are always there in a, in a, in a building. Yes. Um, or, or it could be, a, could be a mall or it could be a shop street. That would be a shop. But a market is where you have something that is uh, 
only on a certain day. It's a Saturday or it's a Friday or a Tuesday. Okay, I didn't know this. Yeah. So a market, a market is established typically in any in a town on one day for a few hours. It might start early, six in the morning, and go to midday, or it might go to early afternoon, and then it all goes away again. And it's often hosted in a uh, car park. Yes. You know, or or a field or something like that. So that's what we mean by a market when we say yes. a market. It was great, thank you. Then I prefer shopping um, shop. Yes. So the question was to go back to the question. Uh, the question is is what do you think are the advantages of mm -hmm using a shop rather than a uh, market? I think you can get something better uh, than market in the shop because uh, you can have some quality and some, some quality like um, guarantee. And we don't have something like this in market, I think, because you can mm, shop something in bargain in the market and it has some weak point mm, uh, for your shopping. I think so. Well, that's an excellent answer. I liked it. Um, so you said that when you shop in a shop, you can have a guarantee. Yes, and other advantages. Something like uh, you can. Um, uh, how uh, how can I uh, describe this act? You can um, back that sh uh, that shopping. I want to say uh, you can return that shopping. Yes, you can return the goods. Get your money back. And we back. don't have uh, this quality in markets. Yes, yes, yeah. We wouldn't say this quality in markets. We would say that capability. Capability. Yeah, you wouldn't have, you don't have the capability or the right to return the goods in a market. I mean, it's so, yes, right is the yeah, best way. Yeah, here. yeah. So what? That's good. Um, let me share a screen again and show you. Yeah. So the expression we use for things like that is is, is sold as seen. Sold as seen. Um, and if I go to uh, all. A property that is being sold to scene means that it's being sold without knowledge of any potential faults, such as damp, blah, blah, blah. Um, can you uh, sold to scene meaning? You used to describe goods that are sold in their existing condition with no promise that they will work well. I wouldn't recommend a private individual buying a car sold to scene or without, without any warranted mileage. So, so, okay, so sold the scene is what you see is what you get. If you like it, you can have it for five bucks. It was amazing. Sold as seen. Sold as seen, yeah, sold as seen. So I bought that car. Um, so for example, this is this is a true statement. I bought a motorcycle. Sight, uh, I, 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 I described it as sight unseen. I'd never seen it, but I bought it over the phone um, last summer. Um, yes. Uh, so I took a risk. Yeah, I took a risk. Yes. Um, because I got on the phone to the guy and said, tell me about this bike and what it's like. Sent me pictures. So I, I'd seen pictures of it, but I'd not seen it with my eye. Um, but everything guy... is unstable here. What was that word you used there, began with A? What was the word? I said everything is unstable here. Did you say unstable? Yes, unstable. 
unstable. Yeah, we wouldn't use unstable there. That would not be the word we would use. Um, um, we, we would say not guaranteed. Not guaranteed. Y yeah. Um, um, we'd say it's not guaranteed. We would say it is um, um, that you can't assume anything. You can't assume. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 it's a risk. But against that, buying secondhand, I actually used eBay, right? I find it on eBay. Do you have eBay in uh, Iran? Uh, we don't access to it. Okay. Um, because of sanction, we don't I, access to it. Uh, I see. Okay. What you say is, we don't have access to eBay in my country, right? Um, you don't have it in China either, but China have an equivalent where you can buy goods on, I think it's called Alibaba or something. Is it Alibaba? Am I getting that right? Yes, um, yes, Alibaba. And Alibaba. <laughs> And, and Alibaba, it turns out, is like one of the biggest countries, uh, companies in the world, you know, because it's, it's such a big market, you know, Alibaba. Yes. Okay, so that was good. Uh, what else did you say? Um, yeah, you said it has some weak points. Some weak points. That was fine. Yeah. 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 So we would more likely we would say has some weaknesses has some weaknesses, weaknesses. yeah okay. um, um the more correct way of saying it is something like this we would say um markets have disadvantages that's what we would say R rather than weak points is okay but it's not how we would say it. We would say markets have disadvantages compared to established shops. See? Yes, disadvantages. Yeah, we would say disadvantages, yeah. Um, Thank you. Okay, right. So what we'll do now is we will do some vocabulary. So let me jump to my list, vocabulary list. Right, so. The word red, pronounce it, someone who hasn't spoken for a bit. Um, red. Red, 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 right. Yeah, okay, that's good, right. And red means what? The color. It's a color, correct. Now, pronounce this word. Read. <laughs> Right, read. So you all said read. I heard that. But if I had was describing this book and I was speaking about it in the past tense, it's I red. would say read. Isn't that right? So read as an R-E-A-D has got two pronunciations. It's read or read read or read, depending whether it's the current present tense or the past tense. So I have read that book. It's read. And if I am going to read, if it's present tense or future tense, it's I am going to read later. Or I'm reading now from my notes. I am reading now. So it's read or read based on tense. Does that make sense, Angel? 
a moment. Read, read. Yes. And did you understand when I said it was sometimes read and sometimes read, depending on the tense? Yes. Makes sense. Read, read in the present. Yes, exactly. Read, exactly. Read, past. Read is past. You got but, it. Mm, you got it. Color and uh, read, uh, <laughs> red in past is similar to red color. Exactly the same. It's exactly, not similar. It's exactly, exactly the same. Exactly the same. Red in past tense. Yeah, they signed the okay, same to the you. ear. Red, read, right? And then, then we've got another word here, right? So we, we've done read as in present tense. But then you, there's another word here, which is read. What is that? What is R-E-E-D? What is read or reads? I think it's words. Come again, thingy. Uh, plants. Yes, exactly. Reads. Yeah. Like um, we. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I would say more like bull rushes, right? Yes, reads, punk. reads, images of reads. These are reads. Yeah. Yeah. So reads usually grow out of water, right? They're in water, right? Reads. So that's reads. So that reads sounds like the same. It sounds like the same word as reads, right? Read, read. Okay, now here's a funny one I'll do. Does anybody know what wacky backy is? Wacky backy. Wacky backy. Yeah, this is a fun one. Yeah, what is wacky backy? <laughs> Anyone? This is a fun one, right? Wacky Backy is informal and British for cannabis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because the backy is short for tobacco. And so if Angel was talking some nonsense, I might say poking a little bit of fun. Uh, divertado. I'm, I'm showing off. Um, I might say Oh, he's been smoking wacky backy. Mm -hmm. In Spain, uh, say Maria. Maria. Maria, like marijuana, <laughs> like marijuana. Yes. Yes. So, mar mar so marijuana, yeah, is another name for cannabis. Yeah. Marijuana. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So, you ladies don't know anything about that, right? <laughs> Mind you, a lot of <laughs> it's from the Middle East that all the cocaine and heroin comes from, all the all the really hard drugs. Um Afghanistan and countries like that. Right. Now here's an here's a word that we we'll want to learn. Hostage. What does that mean? What is a hostage? What is a hostage? Uh, something in prison can be a hostage, for example. Yes, right. I heard the heli thingy. What were you going to say? Uh, the final victim. Repeat. I think it's a kind of victim. Victim. Yes. Victim. Yes. So a hostage, meaning, is a person seized or held as security by the fulfillment of a condition. Three hostages were released, but only after their families paid an estimated $200,000 to the guerrillas. 
Yeah. So it's where a person is effectively kidnapped and held illegally um, as a bar to bargain. You know, so people are bargaining with somebody's life. You know, give me some money for this person. Um, often it's somebody famous that is captured or somebody who's maybe a child of somebody who is wealthy, where the criminals feel that the other person will pay up. Yeah. So that's what a hostage is. Right. We all got that. Now we want to learn an expression, which is hostage to fortune. You heard that? I'm sure you, you probably won't have. Hostage to fortune. No? No. Okay. Hostage to fortune is an undertaking or remark that is regarded as an unwise because it invites trouble or could prove difficult to live up to. Promises made in the heat of an election campaign are too often create hostages to fortune. Right. So, uh, any, any, uh, um, um, oh, I'm going to lose weight this year and, and get down to 11 stone. And I say that I don't think it, I say it amongst all my family. I'm now a, ho a hostage to fortune because I have to do it, otherwise I'll look bad. You see that? So it's like, I'm promising something, but I might not be able to fulfill the promise. So I am hostage to fortune. And fortune is a bit like luck, right? You know, because you can't always predict the future. And so that's why it's used in politics. Um, if somebody makes a commitment to something, but they they don't always have the ability to fulfill. Hostage to fortune. Let's look up in a sentence. We give a hostage to fortune. Oops. We give a hostage to fortune if we make even half apologies for intervening in the legitimacy of such debates. That's kind of hard to parse that sentence, so we'll pass on that one. I believe they are a hostage to fortune. I'm well aware that we've given a hostage to fortune, right? So that means some kind of statement. I shall not give a hostage to fortune in, by mentioning a figure, right? In retrospect, the bonfire of the Quangos phrase was a hostage to fortune. So a Quango, a Quango is a, well, we'll look up Quango in a minute, right? But basically bonfire of the Quangos is saying that the Quangos are going to be destroyed. But what that person is saying is in retrospect, which means looking back on it, that phrase was a hostage to fortune, meaning we've got to do this. We've got to destroy the quangos. See? A quango. Now, you won't know what the word quango means, but this is like a government-like organization. An organization that's been established by the government to consider a subject of public importance, but is independent of the government. That's a quango. Quango. So it's established by the government, but it's independent of the government. So, for example, they might, a government might establish a quango to look after the environment. So it, it concerns the government, it concerns the people, but the government is not going to make it their business to directly control it. They, they need to be independent. 
that's a quangle, okay? And so some people feel that there's too many quangles and that's what the bonfire of the quangles was about. Right, now, right, so here is a really good expression now I want you to learn. Everyone knows what an elephant is, right? Yes. Yep, we all know that is. Do you know what the elephant in the room is though? What is the elephant in the room? I think, I guess something unknown. Well, it's a phrase, um, right? which means something. And what I'll be interested to find out is if you have a similar expression, either in Persia or in Spain or in Burma, right? We're a very multicultural uh, group this morning. Um, a major problem or controversial issue, which is obviously present, but is avoided as a subject of discussion. They steadfastly ignored the elephant in the room, the ever growing debt burden on graduates, right? So, so if there's a really, the idea here is there's a really important thing, but nobody's talking about it. You know, how can you ignore the elephant in the room? Yeah, right. So it's as if, you know, we are gathered, we're gathered around the table and we're discussing, but there's a big elephant here, right? But you're, you're, nobody's talking about the elephant, right? The, uh, it's called the yeah. elephant in the room. First of all, does that make sense? Yes, no, I'm lost. I don't know what silence means. The silent means I'm not getting it or yes, I've got it. What does that mean? Help me. I've got it. Um, got you it. can't ignore something, obviously. Yes, yes. Or if you are doing it, Sometimes it happens a lot and people refer to it as the elephant in the room, right? Elephant in the room sentence. His, alco his, alco his alcoholism <laughs> was the elephant in the room. Everyone knew he had a drinking problem, but no one said anything. Make sense? Yes. yes. Politicians are focusing on the wrong issue and ignoring the elephant in the room. Now, it doesn't tell us what the elephant in the room is here, but you can see the meaning of the sentence. They're, 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 they're talking about lots of things, but they're ignoring the elephant in the room. It was the elephant in the room for a long time until Tamara finally said something about it. So, for example, um, if Biden met Putin this week um, and they didn't discuss Ukraine, he could say that they were ignoring the elephant in the room because, yes. they, should, because they should be talking about the Ukraine. What's going on in Korean? You know, why, why, you know, why, why are all these Russian troops on the border? And you know what I mean? So that would be the elephant in the room in that situation currently. Okay. Okay, so we've learned an expression, the elephant in the room, and we've learned another expression, hostage to fortune, okay? So what I'll be impressed with is if in a future class or in the group chat, if any of you can use these expressions meaningfully, yeah? Yeah, so you know, wa wa wangle, wangle it into what you say, right? Even if it seems a little bit false, right? Sir, I'm not going to ignore the elephant in the room, but why is there no class on Thursday? <laughs> I'm never going to take offense to anything you guys say, okay? So, right, right. Um, 
right? Two more expressions we'll learn, and then we'll call it a day, right? Hue, the first one is hue and cry. Anybody know what that means, a hue and cry? Okay. A Something and... like moaning and um, I, yeah. I guess yes. moaning and uh, crowning. Something like this, moan yeah. and crown. Well, you, is this a pure guess? Have you heard this before, Raheli? Uh, could you repeat your sentence, please? Yeah, yeah. My question is, um, yeah. So, what if you need me to repeat what you say? Is can you repeat the question, please, not the sentence? Right. Uh, I I said morning, morning and crowning. We have uh, some collocation like this, morning, morning and crowning. I think something like this. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not exactly right, but you're not a million miles away, right? You're not a million miles away, right? So okay. I think, right. So here's what a hue and cry is. It's a loud clamor or public outcry, right? So when the whole public gets up in arms about something, it's called a hue and cry, a hue and cry, a hue and cry. And a, uh, let's see where it comes from. A loud cry calling for the pursuit and capture of a criminal. In former English law, the cry had to be raised by the inhabitants of a hundred in which a robbery had been committed if they were not to become liable for the damages suffered by the victim. That's pretty interesting. So, you know, so a hue and cry is this whole idea of like uh, particularly a verbal uprising and, and make, making a fuss. We need to go and do something, right? A hue and cry, hue and cry. So, um, You know, Greenpeace always makes a hue and cry about the environment. Or I don't know if you've seen the news in the last couple of days. Actually, Angel will have seen this. There was a hue and cry made because a trawler, the second largest trawler in the world, dumped all its fish in the Bay of Biscay. Yeah, and there was a hue and cry a hue and cry made about it, right? So in other words, right across the world, people were protesting that they mm -hmm. killed all these fish and then dumped them, just dumped them in the sea. Mm, in Spain, manifestación? Yes. Yeah. Manifestación. Mm. Yeah, it was manifested in Spain. In other words, you saw, you got news of this in Spain, yes? I think it was a Dutch vessel. It's a Dutch vessel. Um, and, and anyway, you could describe it as a hue and cry, right? There's, there's lots of people protesting. A, hue, a public protest is a hue and cry. Yeah, it is, yeah. Okay, so that's a hue and cry. Last expression I'll teach you is this one. What does it mean to wither on the vine? Wither on the vine. Anyone? literally of a fruit to shrivel on the vine or stem unharvested, right? So if you don't, you know, lift the grapes off the vine, they will shrivel up, right? So that's literally what it means. If we don't get into the field, the grapes will wither on the vine, the apples will die on the vine if not picked soon, right? That's what literally what it means. But metaphorically, it's used of something or someone as uh, ignored and neglected and therefore wasted. I hope to get a party in the play. I hope to get a part in the play. I don't want to just die on the vine. 
Fred thinks he is withering on the vine because no one has chosen him. See that? The building project will wither on the vine if they don't agree on a price. Mr. Alan, can I yeah. use wither on the vine for an idea? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I have this great, I think I've got this great idea and I put it to my teacher, but he's ignoring me. And I just think the idea is going to wither on the vine. <sighs> Um, my district built a great new school, but they've never um, put pupils into it. So it's just weathering on the vine. So it's like basically saying, it's a way of saying going to waste. Something is going to waste. Um, you all might say, I need to um, keep up my English. Um, otherwise, it'll wither on the vine. Uh, use it or lose it, just like that. Exactly. Perfect. Use it or lose it, right? We say that of muscles. We say that of our brains. Use it or lose it. Yeah, use it or lose it. So if anything is going to go to waste, you say it withers on the vine. Um, and it's often used of initiatives public things, that kind of thing. But it could be used about personal things as well. Whether on the fire. Okay. Thank you, everyone. That was good. Um, I enjoyed the class. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That was Thank great. You. Thank you, Mr. Thank Lacko. you. Thank you. Um, the, now, I should have a class next Thursday, but... Um, I think I'm going to be traveling on Thursday on a train to London, so it might not be suitable. So what I might do is I might move the Thursday class to Wednesday instead, so we can still have a class, but we'll do it on Wednesday rather than Thursday. I will decide and send out a note on the group forum on that, so you'll, you'll get an update from me. All right? Okay. Okay. Have a nice Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day, Thank everyone. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank now. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.